begin in Mali, where President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita has appointed a slimmed-down cabinet to work towards a government of national unity, according to a statement from his office. We have more details on this story. The new cabinet will include the new prime minister, Bubu Sisse, and six other ministers. It came hours after a summit of West African leaders called for the swift creation of a unity administration and a fresh vote following disputed elections. No statement has been made on the other proposals by the regional grouping ECOWAS, like the resignation of 31 parliamentarians whose election was disputed and the remodelling of the constitutional court. The opposition coalition in Mali had earlier rejected a proposal for a national unity government, insisting that President Keita must go. Meanwhile, a protest movement has sprung up in Mali, shaking President Keita's grip on power. In a statement, the so-called June 5 movement says it demands the resignation of Mr. Ibrahim Boubacar Keita and his regime more than ever, accusing them of bearing full responsibility for Mali's crisis. The announcement came a day after heads of the 15-nation West African bloc ECOWAS stood by Keita and urged him to forge a unity government and resolve an election dispute that has fueled the protests. And international affairs analyst Paul Ejime joins me for more on the news. Good to have you join us, Paul Ejime. Now, um, the ECOWAS group has now asked um, Mali to form a government of national unity. Uh, what does this mean when it comes to the current state of that country? Thank you for having me. Well, I think it's part of the mediation uh, effort by ECOWAS. Remember, initially they sent uh, former President um, Goodluck Jonathan of Nigeria, and then on Monday had um, a virtual um, uh, summit of heads of state. It's still part of um, efforts to try and mediate. But um, uh, it remains to be seen whether this will satisfy the um, opposition coalition M5 uh, RFP, because they are insisting that they are not um, interested in um, in any unity government, they want um, a Keita to uh, to step down, and then the what Keita has done, uh, barely you know hours after the ECOWAS um, summit had recommended um, this government of national unity, is to name you know um, six um, portfolios for finance, defence, national security, foreign affairs, and um, uh, regional administration. But it remains to be seen whether. This will, I, one cannot determine the, not the, the level of consultation that went into it because it was supposed to be, if it's a national uh, unity government, it has to have um, the opposition and other stakeholders. Uh, one is not sure whether this has been done in this, uh, with, the, with the speed with which uh, this has been done. And this can only, if they are not satisfied, it can only infuriate them the more and then uncertainty and tension will, will continue. Right, so when you look at the situation in Afghanistan, for example, and um, what we've seen with the Taliban and the government in Afghanistan, who are also supposed to form a government of national unity, um, when you look at that situation, how do you think that the situation in Mali is likely to play out? Well, it's um, an accident waiting to happen. If uh, care is not taken, it can escalate. And that is what uh, those who are trying to mediate should um, avoid. Um, the ECOWAS uh, leaders, what they did was um, uh, apparently backing um, uh, uh, President Keita, who is the incumbent president. And in a negotiation, it is about give and take. I don't think they have actually given much to uh, the opposition, um, which has been very, uh, they has a grand swell of uh, support. Um, nothing has been given to them by what, I mean, ECOWAS insists. Uh, they must respect constitution so uh, Keita cannot go. One is praying that um, uh, West Africa does not go the way for, of, um, of um, uh, Iran or, or Iraq uh, or Somalia uh, coming back home. Um, by looking at the, the root causes of this problem, the insurrection, the, the jihadist uh, uh, uprising, uh, terrorism, and then uh, 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 accusations of uh, bad governance, embezzlement, cronism, and then the fact that um, uh, President Keita is accused of uh, getting AIDS, arms, to fight uh, terrorism, but is using it, turning it against uh, his own people. And then the role of France, these are, which uh, has um, 
troops has a, uh, more than 3,000 um, uh, uh, military personnel in, in, uh, in Mali. And then the UN, UN, by the way, has uh, more than about 15,000 uh, uh, peacekeeping forces there. And you wonder, what, what, what have, have they all been doing? So care must be taken mm -hmm. that um, uh, these the, the things do not go out of hand, and then it becomes um, a very, uh, 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 you know, a fire that uh, will be difficult to quench. It, it behoves of both the Malians, particularly President um, uh, uh, Keita. I don't think he has um, conducted himself in, um, uh, uh, in much. Um, uh, he's not bringing, he's not helping his case by uh, uh, digging in and not consulting. I mean, he's uh, been accused of not governing very well. He has to address that. All right, talking about President Keita not helping the case, um, one of the major resolution coming from that meet, virtual meeting of ECOWAS is the resignation of the 31 parliamentarians who were elected into whose election into parliament triggered this crisis in the first place. But f from the statement from his office, the, nothing of, on that was addressed at all. What do you make of this? That is the way, I mean, he's only trying to complicate the case because you can't rush and then begin to name um, a government of national unity that is, uh, from all indications, is not inclusive. That is not the issue. People are not talking. In fact, the opposition says they are not complaining about government. They are complaining about governance. And so there, there is a distinction there. So you can have people uh, who say they belong to a cabinet, but how much power do they control? At the moment, Keita can now control about 30% of the territory of uh, Mali. And so how can you, if you name any government, it's going to be the same thing. So is the more, the, the French will say, plus I change, plus lamentos. This, the, the, the more things change, the more they remain the same. And then, so there hasn't been any movement at all. Uh, ECOWAS will have to go back to the drawing board and see what they, to, to assuage mm -hmm. the opposition. And then give to, in to their, some of their demands, which are genuine. There is insecurity in the country. The government is, cannot govern because of um, the, uh, 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 you know, all the issues they have raised, accusations, and then the last election that we talked about. But it's not only about the election. It's a deep-rooted issue about discontentment, about governance, about the welfare of people, uh, economy, uh, you know, uh, health care, uh, social uh, uh, safety net, and all that. Uh, so it, it's not um, forming government is just stri stri uh, striking, uh, you know, scratching the, the surface of, uh, of the problem. And uh, I'm afraid that um, this is not going to bring the peace that um, uh, the ECOWAS uh, uh, leaders uh, are, are craving for. All right, so the ECOWAS is also threatening to sanction um, recalcitrant parties in the ongoing political crisis in Mali um, for those who are not willing to come to the table to negotiate. What sort of sanction do you think would be strong enough to move all parties to the table? Well, it depends. Under its uh, protocol on uh, good governance and then uh, the framework for the prevention of uh, 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 conflict prevention uh, uh, framework, um, it can you know, sanction some people, it can suspend uh, Mali, it can um, uh, impose um, economic sanctions and all that and all that. But um, it remains to be seen what effectiveness mm -hmm. that will have. ECOWAS is not in a position to really uh, bring any hard-hitting sanction on Mali. The world is now uh, struggling with uh, the pandemic. And then um, uh, nobody can raise. The other thing is that, okay, they can send uh, sending troops like they did in Liberia, Sierra Leone, and they have uh, troops now in, um, in the Gambia and then um, uh, Guinea-Bissau. But uh, that was when there was peace. Imagine what it will be. Um, uh, there is lockdown, you know, uh, there is no international travel. How are they going to do that? And remember, most of these countries that are also mediating all have um, issues, governance issues in their country. Is it Nigeria you talk about? Is it uh, Cote d'Ivoire? Is it, you know, it's all over the place. So, and then they say, well, remove the, um, uh, the log in your own hand, uh, eyes before you begin to uh, look at what is expected in your, in your brother's eye. So it is an irony that this is happening and the ECOWAS will watch it before the whole uh, region and then the Sahel all go into um, uh, flame. Remember that um, even now, more than 3,000 people have died over uh, months because of um, the, 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 the problem in, in Mali. Because from the north, that uh, has no government, jihadists mm -hmm. and uh, terrorists, 
They have been able to uh, uh, carry out uh, attacks in, in Burkina Faso, in Niger, and then killing people. And then there is a fear, even the Boko Haram and, uh, that Nigeria is dealing with. Uh, so it's um, a very chaotic uh, and uh, complex uh, issue. And I hope uh, it's, it's better handled uh, with maturity uh, and some seriousness. Otherwise, um, it's, um, it's going to lead into a big chaos. All right, International Affairs Analyst Paul Ejimei, thanks for talking to TVC News.